I love my job, man. I love, I love doing the Bass Masters. I love doing Zona Show, Pro Team Journal, and all the internet content we do. But when I'm home, man, I'm home. After a season of Bassmaster and Zona Show, man, you got to recharge. You got to get your brain. You got to get your brain right. And look, you all, you all work hard, and and you know what I mean. You you need a a day or two to unplug, decompress, and get ready to to re rack and start again. And that's really what happens this time of year in the fall. A day in my life is I wake up early every single day and work hard and play hard every striking lose guy that has been on home life can relate to this is is those guys all fish tournaments all year I cover tournaments and do Zona show and different fishing shows all year just for this 10 to 12 day span to go deer hunting <laughs> like I, I'm convinced that's why we all work we're on the second second day of Michigan gun season and day one was good. I mean, it was good. It went down. Opening day, which was yesterday, was phenomenal. Big hammer, you know, eight comes in, and I shoot him, I'm happy. And then my buddy, James, hour and a half later, he shoots his target deer, this big mast, just thick eight. Probably not Andy Morgan deer, it was a pretty damn good deer. <laughs> For Michigan, it, it, it was a, you know, it's a trophy. It's a trophy animal. The deer I was after, that my target deer walks in front of me at 48 yards, and I got a video of it, but it's walking the direction of, of Karen. And what are the odds? I, I shot a hammer and a bigger hammer walks out. Said nobody ever, and I let it walk because I thought it was gonna walk towards Karen, and it did. It got within 30 yards of her, but it never came out of the thick stuff. But she went out She went out that night and shot a really pretty eight on her own. It was not the one she thought it was. The, the three of us all, you know, we all tagged, and, and that's all you can ask for. Today, like this was just kind of a, a day hanging with me. You know, I woke up at, at 4.30, 5.30, had a cup of coffee and hey, let's go to the deer woods. Yesterday was so great. Everybody that, you know, I hunt with my buddy James and Karen, everybody, ah, they filled their tag and awesome and bucks everywhere. And cameraman Brandon came down last night. He's like, all right, we're going out. We punching tags. I'm like, no, we're done. <laughs> but there's one, there's one. Not gonna lie, this music does make me get pretty pumped up for the potential. I listen to Goodbye Horses from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, right there, right there. I'm very fortunate where I hunt, the guy that I hunt with, Flavor James, we pass on a lot of really, 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 for, for Michigan, for anywhere, really big deer, so we can grow some big deer. And you know, I grew up in my teens and my 20s, man, if it walks by, boom, hey, tag, high five all your buddies that I went to community college with for seven years. I did too. Everybody likes to show people their, their deer pictures or their fishing pictures. The only people that care about your deer pictures and your fishing pictures are you. Nobody else cares about them. And what's funny is I have thousands and thousands, I have thousands and thousands of videos of, of deer that, that I just let, you know, I, I let walk. You know, when I first started hunting, I'm, I'm pretty sure probably a bunch of you are like this, and you still may be, and that's okay. If something comes in, you shoot it. That's what hunting is, and that's all right. You know, that's what fishing is, and that's all right. Like I said, we're only, we're really only hunting one deer today. Uh, but we're gonna see something.
wouldn't you know, 715, a deer walks in, it's a big animal. It's a, if you look at that animal right there, that's a heck, that is a heck of a deer. That's a trophy anywhere in the country. It was not the deer that I was hunting. It was not what I was after. And, and after looking at his picture and looking at videos and things that I'm actually looking back on, and I'm glad I, I didn't take that deer today. It's not what I was, what I was after. You know, cameraman Brandon from, from Striking and Lose, he's like, dude, I saw a biggest deer in the first 10 minutes hunting with you than I've seen, you know, in the last 15 years of his life. But it also makes it a lot easier that I shot one yesterday and really didn't, you know, I wasn't eating tag soup. Hunting is, is for me is the best way to decompress. I, I always say this, to go sit in a blind or sit in a tree stand and just let your mind rest. You all know this, you know this if you hunt. You, you escape a lot of the world's problems when you're in a tree stand or you're in a blind. I, I say the same thing about bass fishing. It's a way to get the hell away from the bad things in the world. You know, that's what hunting has always been to me. Even when a doe walks out, you know what I mean? When you see movement, gosh, it, it, it still makes, you know, makes my hair stand up. You never know what's coming next. That was a really good sit. We got to see that nice buck early. And some does came through, a little spike came through. Um, but my hunting partner and I, like I said, we're, we're a little bit weird about the deer we shoot. There's a, there's a really, really, really wide eight, and then there's a heavy, heavy 10 that were kind of the two deer that we were gonna, and we still are gonna probably hunt those, but you know, to see like, to see, just to, it was granted, it was still really dark out this morning, but to see a buck like that is, uh, where you at B? Give me, that was awesome. So I've hunted there a decade now, and like here's what it was like when I first hunted. It used to be hunted very hard by the people that used to lease it, and like if I saw in a year, and a lot of you can relate to this because this is what real hunting is, you know, I'd only see two or three bucks a season, an entire season. We just came to an agreement to let so many deer go year after year after year after year. And if you ask yourself, like just that deer this morning, you know, that's a big, it's a trophy animal. You say to yourself, dang it, man, is this even helping? Am I, am I psychotic? Am I, you know, what, what, are, what are we doing? And then you start to see the incline where it goes up and you start seeing more bucks, more bucks, more bucks, bigger, 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 bigger. I've had Kevin or, or cameraman Brandon to make the statement, dude, we, we, there's not stuff like that, you know, in the state. It just takes a really, really long, frustrating, very frustrating process to get to that. If you're gonna grow big deer, you have to let some big deer slide. And it's hard, you know? I'm sitting here right now thinking, man, I should have shot that deer this morning. <laughs> It's just a typical day, you know, it's a typical day during hunting season. I went and picked up you know, to my to taxidermy, uh, his name's Brian, he does all his taxidermy in his garage and he does like some of the best work I've ever seen. And he said, hey, your deer from, from last year, your deer from last year's done. You know, to go in there, to go in his garage and look at, I mean, that's an artist. You know, to me, taxidermy work is, it's art. And, and his art is a 10 out of a 10. You know, you pick up 
the deer from last year. And then you kind of, I, I looked at my deer that I dropped off yesterday. I'm like, damn, my deer, my deer this year's bigger. You know, that's, Kevin Van Dam said that to me. He said, hey man, always, always shoot one bigger than the last one you shot. Seeing the one that, that was done being mounted to the one I shot yesterday, we got lucky, we did that. Brian, you're the best, buddy. Thank you for everything. Thank you. See you in the next day. After that, it was a typical day. One of the things I do is I go to the other side of the lake and just visit my dad and uh, sit down for an hour or two. And uh, he gives me all the gossip of the lake shore. Like he is the principal, the dean of the east end of this lake. Let's take a cruise. I grew up on this lake. We lived in Chicago, but my parents had this house on the east side of the lake and we'll go up above the lake, we'll be able to look over it. Like, I don't know how many times back when I was a little dude, I would walk around the lake and just skip boat docks. Thousands of times I walked around this lake. One of the reasons why Karen and I moved here is we could be near dad and make sure he's doing okay. My mom passed away last year, my brother passed away a year and a half ago, and it was traumatizing to the entire family, but most of all my father. I, I, I never knew my dad very well, you know, I, I, uh, I, I just, I, I'm a different person, you know, I love the guy, he's my dad, but I was just a different person, you know. He, he taught me how to fish when I was a little dude, and I went elsewhere with fishing. <laughs> he wanted to catch every bass, every bluegill on this lake, and I mean, knock the side off of it and fry it on the lake shore. Great parties, killer parties. We're just different people. Something is traumatizing, and, and all families go through traumatizing times. It brought, brought me a lot closer to my dad, where I, where I feel like I know him a lot better in the last year than I really had the 46 years of my life. So this is the this is the house I actually this is the house I grew up in. Uh, you know we'd come here from Chicago and come up here and fish like all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every single week, and then moved up here in '91. There he is. Uh huh. That's. You for a ride in the buggy, huh? Yeah, I did. All right. That's Big Al right there. Hey. Big Al caught that muskie back yeah, right in '77. It was right out here in the lake right in the lake. Yeah. You know, jump in the golf cart, have a cold one with my dad, and, and BS about nothing. Check that out. It went through the window. Opening day, a 10 point goes through the window of the church. That is so bizarre. Where was that at? A church downtown. Sturgis, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Look at that. Bless his heart. Yeah. And Just ran bless. up the stairs, ran down the stairs, and left the same way it came in, right through the window. Yeah. Can you believe that? This is the most messed up thing ever, and I rip on dad for this. You ready? I don't know if it's an Italian thing. You ready? There's a garbage. Right. There's nothing in it. Right. Okay? Because he has a secondary garbage right here. What's the point of having the pail if you're gonna have <laughs> He's a piece of work. <laughs> I mean, he is your typical Italian dad. Yeah. But in a nutshell, that was the whole day. Beautiful. That one good? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. My, my, my life at home is very, <laughs> it's very lame. I'm a loner. I am. I, I, I can't say this enough. I know I already said it. I hang around my wife and my wife and my wife. I mean, I got friends and stuff like that, but, but I prefer when I'm home. The Scorpion, she's... Karen's my best friend I've ever had in my life. And you're, you're, you're lucky to have that when that's your, your wife. 